What's cracking guys, Omar Isaf here, back with another video. In this video today, I want to talk all about Olympic weightlifting and how actually the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, is threatening to drop Olympic weightlifting from the Olympics in 2024 unless they get essentially the doping scandal that's been going on in order. And this is huge. I actually haven't seen a lot of outlets, some media outlets, which I'll post about here, have talked about it, but within the community, the implications of what this means. And if you care at all about lifting, powerlifting, weightlifting, uh, world's strongest man, even bodybuilding, this is big news, and here is why. First, for the IPF boys that want powerlifting to get into the Olympics, if this happens, if this doping scandal doesn't get resolved, the IPF, the likelihood that powerlifting will enter the Olympics will be far diminished. Let's break this down. So, recently, they've retested samples, old samples, uh, from athletes, and they found a lot of people positive. So much so, I think 29 medals, previous medals given to winners, people that got bronze, silver, gold, were stripped because when they retested these samples, they actually found illegal substances. They used new techniques to find these substances, and when they retroactively tested them, they found these banned substances. So they had to strip these medals, 29 in total. But even more than that, the IOC's concern is that when it comes to weightlifting, out of all the people that got busted in the Olympics, out of the 101, 49 were from weightlifting. So what they're basically telling the weightlifting community is that you need to get things in order. Otherwise, if you don't, within six months, they have to come up with some sort of plan to present how they're going to fix this. If they don't do this, then weightlifting stands to be removed from the 2024 Olympics. And this would be terrible, obviously, for weightlifting, but also for powerlifting, for the goals uh, that maybe the IPF has. This would just have huge ramifications. But I want to offer an alternative perspective to this. And here's what I am trying to say. I think other sports get more easily overlooked for such infractions because they're more popular uh, around the world. When it comes to sprinting, I'm not directly accusing anyone, and I do believe they definitely test, but sprinting is such a huge, important sport for the Olympics in terms of viewership that if such a scandal like this was happening in sprinting, I don't think that they would remove it. And if we take a look at just human behavior, everyone wants bigger, better, stronger, faster. There's always that push. You're not going to stop these countries from having their athletes use performance enhancing substances. This just isn't realistic. What really happened is that they developed new techniques to test old samples. They found so many people that were using these banned substances via these new techniques and then they're able to strip the metals away. This inevitably is going to still happen in the future as they develop better and better techniques of testing. And so all these athletes that we know and love when it comes to weightlifting, a lot of them will eventually get caught. So this problem I don't feel is going to be resolved, especially when there's so much pressure to perform even better than before. Think about this, if you tune into the new Olympics and the record that's been held for years is not broken, that's kind of boring, right? If sprinting, if Usain Bolt didn't break the record, if a new guy didn't break the record every decade or whatever, it would kind of get a little bit boring. Oh, I guess we kind of maxed out the human potential. So much so when it comes to Olympic weightlifting, they've had to change the weight classes because some of the old records are so damn high. Why? Well, once again, testing wasn't as rigorous back in the day, so they changed it. If we look at some of the all-time records, they still haven't been touched. So there's new weight classes, new champions in those weight classes, but the old records haven't been touched. And ultimately, this affects not only us that are passionate when it comes to lifting, but also the athletes. Think about it once again like this. If we know in a sport like weightlifting, if you want to be the best, that you will do everything in your power, you'll use whatever, use performance enhancing drugs, you'll try and uh, mask it so you don't get caught, everything in your power to perform as good as possible, then what will happen if they get retroactively ways to test this, you're screwed any which way and all countries are going to do this. So it's not like I, I see some people trying to make that moral uh, issue, that argument, they'll say, well, it's up to the countries then to ban these individuals or ban the coaches or whatever, remove basically these drugs from the sport. It's just not going to happen. It's too ubiquitous. It's like trying to ban drugs in other sports that have these major problems. It will exist so long as there's pressure to set new records. And there will always be those pressures because humans just want to do better than before. What is the solution, however? And again, this does affect the IPF if they want to get into the Olympics. If weightlifting gets banned or removed in 2024, it's not going to happen for powerlifting. 
My alternative solution is what the world's strongest man does and what I do support, I think it's really good. They just don't test. They let the freaks go at it because they're pro athletes, they're professionals, they can do whatever they want and they go at the highest level. And this, I think, is why in recent years, the world's strongest man has gotten even more attention because you have all these huge freaks. You got Brian uh, uh, Shaw, you got Half Thor, you got a lot of these dudes just lifting insane weight, insane weight, Eddie Hall with his deadlift, and they're just going at it and they're seeing more weight than ever lifted before. They're doing better than they ever have done, and that is as a result of them just being allowed to be athletes and do their own thing. When it comes to powerlifting, there's also untested powerlifting where essentially the same rules apply. You could do whatever you want, uh, and so the rules are equal to every single person. Because when you do have testing, the issue that arises is that some countries, potentially there are scandals, right, get preferential treatment. Bigger countries, maybe some bribes are in order. A lot of things go on. And so that becomes a huge issue when you try and implement testing that can't accurately even test if the drugs are being used. So. For weightlifting, I think ultimately it should be more of a sport where it's untested and let the best just try and lift as much weight as possible. You know, Ilya Ilyan, who I look up to, who is an amazing athlete, he got his stuff stripped once again because he was caught. And that makes sense. I get it. He's caught, so he has to be stripped. But there should be some sort of other federation, some sort of other competition, some sort of other avenue. So in the eventuality that Olympic weightlifting is dropped from the Olympics, there's a backup plan. Because if all these sports that we like, all these strength sports, if we want them to get more attention, we have to support them. We have to figure out a way for them to work. And this Olympic pipeline dream might not be it because once again, Olympic weightlifting in the grand scheme of things compared to sprinting in terms of popularity, it's just not there. It is at risk of being banned from the Olympics and I think that'd be a damn shame. Anyways guys, just wanted to make a video on this. I'm curious as to your opinion on this topic because if this happens, I think it has ramifications for all of our other sports besides you know, bodybuilding and world's strongest man. But who knows, once again, once if you set up a bunch of dominoes, if you knock one down, who knows what might happen? Who knows how the rules might change? That's all I thought I would share as someone that's passionate about all these sports that as a spectator, I like to watch these things. I want to continue to watch these things. That's the whole video. That's all the time we have. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you like the video, make sure to like the damn video. Else, how many likes should we get? 1629. I was going to go for 2024 because that's the year that they might potentially get. You see what 20, I'm saying? 20,000. Oh, 20,000. 20, like the damn video, and I'll be seeing all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace.